Alrighty, guys, it only makes sense, Tabitha. We started the episode with John Hewitt, CEO and president of REC. We have to end the season uh, with him as well. So, John, welcome back to the Good News Fredericksburg podcast series. Absolutely, Anna and Tabitha. Thank you so much for having me back today. I really appreciate the opportunity to be part of the discussion um, and really just excited about um, kind of uh, closing out this series that is really focused a lot on REC and everything that we're doing at the co-op. And let me also just say again, thank you um, to, to the entire Chamber of Commerce, all that you're doing for the Fredericksburg region, and certainly uh, sharing the, the good news uh, through, the, through your Good News Fredericksburg uh, series here. So thank you for that. Absolutely. Season two, it's so wild. Yeah. Um, here I come to a close, but uh, John, you are one of the most respected and knowledgeable experts in electric cooperative, cooperative industry. Uh, you've led co-ops in Florida, Texas, and served at the national level. Uh, why REC and why the REC community? What draws you to it? Sure. Well, well first of all, thank you. And you know, we, we have a um, phenomenal industry and I, I'm very, um, very, very blessed and very thrilled and, and very uh, excited to be part of uh, this electric sector. And within that, the co-op uh, network has really just been this uh, tremendous place uh, to, to have a career and to invest my time and my resources. REC is just this wonderful organization, you know, first of all, and you have to look at this from so many different angles, but first of all, what we do, you know, you know kind of the, the, what we do in terms of the service and the mission and, um, you know, the engineering me is, is really drawn to, to the grid and the technology. And so we've got you know, 17,000 miles of infrastructure. But, but then you've, you've got this uh, across these 22 portions of 22 beautiful uh, Virginia counties, you know, this wonderful slice of the Commonwealth. And we bring the, the you know, kind of the people aspects of it um, into our mission with respect to the way we serve, the way our our call center, our member service teams are so caring and the, the way our, our field crews are highly responsive and, and caring and, and, and making sure that they're taking care of the membership out there. So it's this really unique um, combination of uh, the, the mission and, and, and the, the systems that we keep up with and then the people that are doing this work. And, and I've just got to say that when you look at, at Rappahannock Electric, we have something very, very special here. We have something that's you know very unique. We have a, a, a very successful culture it really speaks to um, how we go about doing the job. And I think, you know, from, from, the, from the opportunity to be part of, of this kind of organization and to lead REC, um, it is really a wonderful, wonderful place to be. And, um, and it's a challenging job, but I, but I think our whole team is, mm -hmm. is really, um, you know, just enjoying those challenges and, and uh, doesn't shy away from, you know, the next challenge and the next opportunity that's ar ar around the, the corner there for us to, uh, to solve in serving our membership. Absolutely. And I think we've definitely felt that in these interviews. You know, we were talking right before we got on air that um, we've talked with over about 18 different REC um, just employees from every department, um, mm -hmm. from linemen to your market research, all that stuff. Forestry. Um, forestry. Yeah, right. that was a really cool one. <laughs> um, tell us how, you know, how did you get started? We went into a little bit of this in your first episode, but you know, you started from the bottom. <laughs> now, you know, you're the leader of a top company. So tell us a little bit about that and share some tips for maybe some different aspiring leaders as well. Well, well, well absolutely. And first of all, as, as you've talked with and spoken with and had the dialogue with our employees, you know, you've gotten to see firsthand uh, our culture and, and how those employees are serving and the support they have of their families and and the care that they pour into the community. And, and that, that's very hands-on. So it's very action-oriented for us. And, and that's just a really a, a big part of what defines REC going forward. You know, um, so, so, so I did, I, I started at a really early age. I started out of high school working for an electric utility in Eastern Tennessee in the, in the Tennessee Valley. And um, really just, um, you know, I started um, in working with the substation group, I would be, you know, um, shoveling gravel, pulling weeds, paint, painting fences, you know, and, and I, I just kind of really enjoyed it. I began to realize that I, I enjoy, you know, being around the people, being around the, um, the grid, so to speak, and, and all the systems. And, um, you know, I had a, a, an injury, a sports injury around that time, and I was going to engineering school at the University of Tennessee, and that sports industry, in, uh, injury put me in the engineering department the next summer. So I wasn't doing the field work. And I actually got uh, to work in the engineering department and I, it just clicked. 
you know, everything for me just started clicking and it, it really enforced uh, what I was studying. And uh, I got to take a, a really deeper look at how to design the grid and how to build the systems. And uh, from there, I really never looked back. I, I, I took a career in the electric sector. I spent the first uh, many years of my career on the municipal side, uh, public power, but on the municipal side of the industry. And then I found the co-op network and it's, it's just been fantastic. I've had the opportunity to work with co-ops in multiple states. And as you mentioned earlier, uh, serve uh, at the national level with our National Trade Association. So it's, it's really um, a fantastic industry. Uh, I hope that um, folks that, that are out here hearing the, the podcast, uh, you know, might, might think about um, uh, a career in the electric sector because there is so much that we're working to solve. Our, our roles have become uh, very, you know, increasingly challenging over the years. Um, and utilities and co-ops such as REC have begun to do uh, more and more in terms of the services and the solutions that we're, that we're taking on uh, in, in serving the membership. Right. And if there's one thing that I've learned, it's that um, there are so many uh, career opportunities within REC. Um, there are jobs I didn't even know existed, but I'm like, man, I missed out on an opportunity, especially when we talked to the, um, she, the forestry mm-hmm. and she was telling us mm-hmm. how the trees interact with the lines and how she has to study them. Impressive. We loved it. Um, so John, if you could, um, we've heard from others at REC, like we said, 18, give or, give or take, uh, REC representatives, um, and they've talked about the future of electricity and the future of REC. Could you tell us a few things that might make the community and our listeners excited about the future of REC and what you guys plan on doing? Sure, sure. And, and I will say that in almost everything that we're doing, um, new, new tools and systems are, are being brought to the table, and our employees are... Um, really thriving with, uh, you know, as, you, as you spoke with our foresters, but it, every group that you, that you speak with, you hear about new tools and new ways of getting the job done. Right. And, and that's really a part of what's so exciting about what's happening uh, within REC. We're, we're really investing heavily in terms of our employees, in, in terms of their development. And, and we're in a, um, a time and a place where um, there's so much opportunity to continue to learn. And I would just say from a leadership perspective, uh, you know, always make sure that, that, that you're continuing to learn. But, but the focus within REC today is, is really in, in providing this outstanding service to the membership, um, really focused on, take, first of all, taking care of our employees, you know, so that they can serve the membership. Uh, we're, we're really emphasizing and prioritizing the strengthening of our systems, and that can mean new systems or, or the uh, strengthening of, of existing systems that have already stood the test of time. And then a lot of emphasis on preparing for the future. Uh, and that's um, a, um, a, a very wide, a very broad horizon uh, when we think about the future for uh, energy and other services that we're involved in. Um, we have new technologies. We have members uh, uh, embracing those new technologies, such as uh, maybe um, uh, distributed generation, rooftop solar, uh, maybe it's energy storage systems. We have an, an, a really imminent wave of electric vehicles uh, that will be, um, I think, very, very um, beneficial for businesses and homeowners, uh, and also beneficial for the co-op, but also challenging because there's a lot of energy that's going to be involved in uh, powering up transportation uh, in the uh, years ahead, and especially this decade that we're in is going to be, I think, a a very significant decade for growth with electric vehicles. And now we have our members and the communities that we're working with asking us to to play a bigger role in um, rural broadband, and we're working to help solve uh, broadband issues and needs across the service territory. So this is absolutely a great time uh, for, for a career at REC. I, I think I mentioned maybe in our opening podcast, but we are in a wave of retirements. Um, about 20% of our employees are retiring in a five-year wave here. And, and these are folks that literally built the system and have helped REC be uh, as successful uh, as it has over the years. These individuals are, are now um, moving on to, to, to the next phase of their retirement. And so we've got um, a lot of big roles to fill and and a lot of um, growth and and opportunities within the organization and also for those uh, in the region that that, um, may want to learn a little bit more about REC. Wow. It has been, I tell you what, I don't think um, we have taken this for granted at all, getting to know REC a little bit more. And, you know, we have evolved so much together during this podcast series, and we appreciate the support that you have all given us. You started the podcast and Look where we're at now. We started Zoom to Facebook Live. So, um, John, it has been a pleasure to get to know your team, your staff, and what you guys are doing 
we definitely take for granted the fact that we can just turn on a light switch, but to hear all the things that go behind the scenes and how we're able to do that um, is absolutely incredible. And I know that our community online and listening is definitely, definitely getting an opportunity to learn something they probably wouldn't have learned otherwise. So thank you for your time. Well, thank you. You know, our objective in providing outstanding service is is to be that um, that uh, trusted energy advisor uh, to our members and to the community. And so please uh, don't ever hesitate to call on us, call mm-hmm. on me, call on our team for anything that we can do at REC to, uh, to help serve the community. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, John. Thanks, John. And go balls. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> thank you.